titled Genuine Negro Jig. You know what? That's not an easy thing to do to win the Grammy <laughs> in any category, that's for sure. You know, they even have a song in a little film you may have heard of called The Hunger Games. So there you go. The residual checks from that can help buy an extra banjo or two. It's a real thrill to have them with us here tonight. They've been in Toronto, I know, on one other occasion at Hughes' room, but boy, we got them on the big stage tonight. Put your hands together for the one and only Carolina Chocolate Drops! All right, good evening, everybody. How you doing? Let's give one more round of applause for the Corey Harris and his band. He's one of the guys when I started playing uh, that uh, really inspired me, you know, so that it's a beautiful thing to be able to share the stage with those guys. It really, really is. But uh, we're the Carolina Chocolate Drops, getting ready to bring you some of the old-time fiddling banjo music. Some of that old-time blues, old-time jazz, country music, a little bit of this and that, and hopefully we'll have a good time. Does that sound good to you? Yeah. All right, so we're going to start it off with one that we learned from a fellow by the name of Joe Thompson, and this is uh, one of his family's tunes. This is called Old Black Annie.
Well, folks, we're gonna we're gonna hit another old time tune for you. But uh, thank you so much for singing, by the way. That's great. And this is a we're gonna do another old another old time tune, a little bit different now. This is a one from the recordings of Charlie Poole, who was one of the great banjo players of the early 20s. Came from a place called Eden, North Carolina. And uh, let's see, well, we'll do a little bit of this one for you. This is one of his big hits called Milwaukee Blues. <laughs> sung by Ethel Waters, so we're dipping into the jazz uh, era here, and uh, she was a wonderful singer. If you don't know who she is, look her up. Um, this is a song about the demise of a relationship. There's, there's no songs about that, right? It's not ever been done. Well, this is, a, this is a special kind of song about the death of a relationship, because sometimes, you know, you don't figure that out until after you've walked down the aisle. And... Uh, so this is talking about that a little bit. Once for sale, am I making it? 
Thank you so much. All right. We're going to go back another, almost another 100 years now. This is, we're going to do a couple of pieces from 1855. And, uh, yeah. Huh? Good year. It's a good year, yeah. Well, for some. <laughs> for some. <laughs> but anyway, moving swiftly along, I'm going to be playing a, uh, what's Don't called worry, a... this ain't no nostalgia trip. Either. No. <laughs> um, I'm going to be playing a minstrel-style banjo here. This is a replica from the 1860s, and uh, this is what they used to look like back then. And uh, the banjo is an African-American instrument. Uh, some people know that, not a lot of people do, but it started off... Uh, as, only, as known as only a black instrument, the first hundred years of his existence. And then around the 1850s, uh, white performers started to pick it up and take it around, and, and it became very, very popular. Wherever they went and took the banjo, people wanted to know how to play this, play this thing, and they went all over the world. And one of the reasons why in America it's not really talked about a lot because it was in blackface, and uh, we don't really like to talk about that part of our history. But it was a long period of time where that was the most popular form of entertainment. And so it's really important to talk about because it's at the root of what's happening now in, 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 in our entertainment and culture. And there's also a lot of beautiful music that comes from that time period. So you can't throw it all away because there's a lot of negativity around it, because there was. But there was also beautiful music. So that's what we're here to do is, is to show a couple, some, of those, some of that music. And so this is a couple of tunes from the Briggs Banjo Instructor of 1855. And, uh, and what, you, you guys talk about this. Dom and I are going to be playing an instrument called the bones, the rhythm bones, the bone castanets. They're one of the world's oldest instruments found everywhere, Mesopotamia, Egypt, Asia, India, other places such as these. And they were a very important part of minstrel music and one of the main instruments in your main minstrel band. So enjoy. <laughs> Yeah, we like to tempt fate. We travel around with an instrument that's got a goatskin head. So I have to. It's worth it, I promise. One yeah. of the ways they think that the bones came to America was through um, Irish immigrants who there are a lot who lived in America, and it was a tradition that they brought over with them. Also, lots of sailors used to do it playing whale bones, and they would play with those kind of bones. And then it became a big part of African American music, and when minstrelsy came out, it was sort of imitating what uh, you know real black music is, and so that's why it was a big important part of minstrelsy. Well, one thing that's funny is the after a while, the black folks wanted to get in on the on the entertainment game with it, and so that was a, a way that a lot of black people first got to strut their stuff on stage was by entertaining, making fun of the white guys, making fun of the black guys. Now that starts getting a little bit funny that way. You know, actually, uh, one of the most famous Bones recordings is the theme song for the Harlem Globetrotters, the version of Sweet Georgia Brown. That's from a guy named Brother Bones, who was a black Bones player, played with four in each hand. How you doing? All right, so here we go. See if we can swing it for you a little bit. Thank you. 
cool stuff, huh? The thing that's crazy about it, folks, is these songbooks have hundreds of these tunes. And it was a way that people got introduced to syncopation really early on. It's pretty amazing. I just heard her in and sit and practice some of the tunes just for a, an afternoon, like when we're preparing for a gig, and it's amazing the music that comes out of these books. But nevertheless, uh, we're going to do an old-time blues for you now. This is one called Boodly Bum Bum. And now this is one I picked up a little while ago, and I can't tell you what Boodly Bum Bum means. I can't tell you for sure, you know. One of those things that, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's different all over the world, you know. And so if, if in the course of this song you think of what Boodly Bum Bum means, if you go back home, you find that Boodly Bum Bum in that cabinet wherever, or you find it in the sugar jar, or whatever you, wherever you have it, you know, it's all in the eye of the beholder. So you can send me a, <laughs> an envelope, Caroline Chocolate Drops, care of North Carolina, and, uh, you know, we talk about it. But anyway, this is one here, Boodly Bum Bum. We'll see, see what we can get out of this one. You guys ready? All right. I'm ready. <laughs> How they talk, hubby. Ah, talking me.
start to run. What kind of a man was that? He got down on all fours. Boy, she started to run. She snatched that boy's big paychecks and gals. I had my fun. I got my bootle bomb bomb. I gets my bootle bomb bomb. Every time it's bootle, bootle, bootle bomb bomb. Thank you. Well, we've been playing festivals up in Canada for, for some years now, and I've just been really enjoying getting to know. This is a big country. Y'all got a big country up here. And uh, we've been to the west side and the east side, and, and I even had my honeymoon on PEI. And uh, so I'm very, there's lots of very special parts of Canada to my heart. And one of the things I've enjoyed the most is, is discovering your folk tradition and uh, the fiddling tradition up here. It's just amazing. And uh, I'm just, I totally love it. I can't do any of it, but I love it, you know. I, I play that in the privacy of my own, my own room. But this is, a, this is a tune we learned from a, a couple of fabulous uh, musicians up here. Um, they play in a group now called Shisum and Lotus, and if you've heard of them extra points because they're awesome and if you haven't heard of them go check them out on youtube they're really really cool um and uh so they said this first tune was called was you ever in quebec also if, if you did not uh, say you, you love the fiddling traditions around here in the different parts of canada there's a great site called folkstreams.net and they have about half a dozen uh, different movies on the different fiddling traditions, including the Mati fiddling tradition, where they do a lot of step dancing along with their fiddling. You should check it out. It's very beautiful stuff. But anyway, here we go. What you have in Quebec? <laughs> Say you love me too 
We're getting married in June Have a long honeymoon Then settle down for life Oh, hey, day, little lady Promise to be my wife Then what happened? I had a gal, oh, what a pal She left me alone one day I didn't mind, because I find They most always do you that way So I went a boat to try to find out If another gal I couldn't find In less than a day I met Sadie Mae Now I hand her the same old lines What lines is that? <laughs> Oh, Sadie, little lady, I love no one but you. Oh, Sadie, little lady, say you love me too. We get married in June, have a long honeymoon, then settle down for life. Oh, Sadie, my lady, promise to be my wife. All right, take him out, Six. Thank you so much, folks. <laughs> Who dat? That's Hubby Jenkins. <laughs> And so this is one of his early tunes he did with Tampa Red called, But They Got It Fixed Right On. And so we'll do a little bit of this one for you. One, two. On the foul, too bad that the news got out, but they got it fixed right on. A man with a peg leg and a gal named Sue broke his peg leg half in two. Only way that they could fix the leg was to get this gal to take a hold of the peg, but they got it fixed, ain't no doubt. Nobody Thank you, folks. Lord, I thought it was going to be death by hat there for a second. Have you the lunch of all the honey? the lunch of all the honey? the lunch of all the Don't do a don't a leak and knock and throw them all the honey. Don't do a don't a leak and knock and throw them all the don't do it, don't leak it, not in the more the unique. Don't do it, don't leak it, not in the more I give you. Bring your crack, leave me, go, bring your bum, hold the bring your crack, leave me, give it, I need me a real boy, I give it, I need me a dance to Jane. Give it a name, you're a real boy, 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 you're a
Well, folks. Ooh, top of live. Thank you. Well, this next one we're going to do for you, folks, is uh, this is we're going to play some country music now. Does that sound good to you? Want to hear about country? This is an old Johnny Cash tune. You guys ever heard of him before? <laughs> we, well, you know, he's, he's what a, what a wonderful artist, you know. And uh, the reason we started playing this one again is uh, we got invited to be on a show called We Walk the Line, which is a tribute to Johnny Cash's music. And we got to be on the bill with some great people like uh, you know Chris Christopherson and Willie Nelson was there, and uh, Brandy Carlisle, uh, Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> yeah, he was hosting, I'm not lying, you know? You can actually find you can find it on DVD and stuff like that. It was a great pleasure to be a part of it, and uh, great to meet all these wonderful artists, uh, Iron and Wine, and you know all these different people. But, but um, this is this is the tune that we got to play on there. And uh, actually, I was watching it back. I was watching it back the uh, the other day, and uh, Layla had this rock star moment where her her cello bow like exploded in the middle of this song, and the crowd went wild. I mean, like dudes are ripping their shirts off and throwing them at her and everything. You know, and I, I, I was surprised she didn't even crack a smile, you know? <laughs> she, was probably, she was focusing on playing with the three strings of her bow that was left. <laughs> it's amazing. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll do this for you. This is another one about a troubled relationship. Um. This is the one called Jackson. Yeah, help us out if you know it.
Thank you, folks. Thank you. Well, we have time for just a couple more for you tonight. This has been such a great evening, and uh, we really appreciate y'all y'all coming out. We've been here a few times before. We played a very lovely venue called Huge Room. Yeah. Know if you've, uh, and uh, that's been a really great place to play, but this has been really awesome, too. And uh, this, this, this uh, next to last tune we're going to play for you, this is originally recorded way back in uh, 2001, which is about 1855 when it comes to pop music. We used to play this in schools, you know, as kind of a way to connect, you know, and when we started playing it, you know, people were like, oh, yeah, I know that song. And then there came the year when nobody knew this song at all, <laughs> and they all stared at us. I remember that was back in uh, uh, two. Yeah. <laughs> This is a song about revenge. Y'all aren't too bloodthirsty. Sometimes I say that and half the crowd goes, ah! Revenge! And that makes me wonder what's going on in their lives. So. But this is a, uh, yeah, that's really all there is to say about this. <laughs> I'm not particularly good at tuning and talking. You may have noticed. I apologize. All right.
Tuesday, we're going to come back. Thank you so much. Well, we got this last number for you. We're going to make it quick because we're ending the, nearing the end of our time. I think we have, do we have CDs somewhere? Anywhere? You just go yeah, back uh, those, that way. So we have CDs and T-shirts over there. So if you uh, want to help support us, you know, and want to take some of our music home, please do. It's over there. And I know we've got, I think we've got for sure two albums with us. Junior My Negro Jig and Leaving Eden, and we got some really cool t-shirts and stuff over there. So check it out. Um, but we sure, sure appreciate your enthusiasm and wonderful energy, because that really makes a difference for us, because, man, we, you know, without y'all, it's just a really lonely rehearsal. So we just really appreciate y'all. Thank you. And what a, this festival is fabulous, too. Everybody here has been really nice and awesome. It takes so, so much work to put this on, so let's give a round of applause for everybody who does all of this. Yeah, that, that's including the big disco ball over Especially there. Especially the big disco ball. All right, I, I almost felt like it, when it came, started coming down earlier and I was like, oh, it's 2014 already, what happened? So we're gonna do this last one. We hope you'll sing along with us. It goes like this. Hi-ho, fiddle day. Okay, hi-ho, fiddle day. There we go. Now the third line, you just go, hi-ho. And then the last line is, hi-ho, fiddle I day. Brilliant. Now, just like the others sing along, it's going to go a little faster when we actually launch into it, so don't be surprised, but you'll catch on to it. It's, it's a fun song called Sourwood Mountain. We're the Carolina Chocolate Drops, and uh, if you want to know more, thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it, folks. And uh, if you want to know more about uh, where we're going to be, just go to www.carolinachocolatedrops.com. We're, we're doing a couple more festivals up here in Canada this summer. We're doing the uh, Edmonton Folk Edmonton Festival. Folk Festival. And we'll also be in Regina at thank the Folk you. Festival out there. Yes, so, uh, you know, that's kind of far from here, I know, but... Uh, yeah, you know, you guys, you, might know. Be, you guys might be motorheads, I don't know. You know first, time, first time we came out to Canada, we had a, a gig in Winnipeg and then a gig in Vancouver, and we thought we'd be all right driving, but then we... <laughs> <laughs> we weren't, because yeah, yeah, in America, you know, it's just one big gray thing on top of the, the states, and so we were like, oh, yeah, it ain't going to be nothing, you know, and then all of a sudden, it was like, oh, no, oh, no. <laughs> Took a lot of Tim Hortons to make that happen. Anyway, here hey, we go, Timmy. Southwood Mountain. <laughs> Say it with me. 